in this indictment, you were initially charged with count one, conspiracy to violate the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act, which carries a sentence of five to 20 years. You were also charged with count 49 in this indictment, which is murder, which carries a sentence of life. You were charged with two counts. Which carried a sentence of five to 20 years. <clears throat> you were initially charged with counts 53 and 65, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon under code section 16-11-133, which each carried a sentence of 15 years consecutive to count one. And then you were also charged with count 54, which is possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, which carried a sentence of five years consecutive to count one. Do you understand that that's what you were initially charged with? Yes. Do you understand that you have the right to plead either guilty or not guilty to these charges? And if you plead not guilty or remain silent, you may receive a jury trial. Yes. Have you had an opportunity to go over and review the waiver of rights form with your attorney? Yes. And I'm going to hand this to your attorney. Did you sign this along with your attorney? Yes. Have you had enough time to speak with your attorney, Mr. Bruce Harvey, about all the facts and circumstances known to you regarding the charge in this indictment? Yes. Do you need any more time to discuss this matter with your attorney? No. Are you satisfied with his counsel representation? Yes. And I'd include in there the um, counsel and representation by Ms. Westmoreland and Mr. Garland as well. You had a, a team of attorneys. That's correct. Yeah. All right. And they are all, all attorneys of record and have participated in this particular proceeding and negotiations leading up to this proceeding. Thank you. Do you waive formal reading of the indictment? Yes. Do you waive any and all defects with respect to the indictment? Yes. And to your knowledge, have you been arrested on all the charges in this indictment? Yes. And Mr. Harvey, the state is unaware of any outstanding warrants related to these charges. Do you know of any outstanding warrants that are related to these charges? Not related to those charges. Have you been advised of the minimum and maximum sentence for each charge that, each charge that you are pleading to? Yes. Do you understand this is a negotiated plea of guilty, which means that the state will recommend to the court as to count one, conspiracy to violate the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act, a sentence of 20 years to serve seven years in custody, balanced on probation. Yes. Do you understand that as a part of the negotiated agreement, the state will null pros or dismiss count 49, which is the murder counts, count 50, 51, which are the gang activity counts, Count 53, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Count 54, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. And count 65, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Do you understand that is the negotiated agreement? Yes. Do you understand that the court does not have to accept that recommendation? Yes. And the court can sentence you to the maximum on each charge and can run those charges consecutively or one after the other? Yes. Well, there's only one charge that yeah, sorry, I, a guilty plea is being entered into, so... Um, under my breath. There's no other sentence to run anything consecutively with with right. regard to this plea. You understand that? Yes. Okay. Do you understand this plea may be used to enhance sentencing on other convictions in this jurisdiction as well as in other jurisdictions, including the federal court? Yes. Do you understand if you are currently on probation or parole, your probation or parole may be revoked based on your entering a guilty plea today? Yes. Do you understand if you're placed on probation of any kind, you cannot violate any criminal laws of any governmental unit or any special conditions of probation without being subject to revocation for the balance of your sentence? Yes. Do you understand you are not allowed to possess or use a firearm while on probation? Yes. Do you understand if you are not a United States citizen, a guilty plea conviction will affect your immigration status and will result in deportation, just like a conviction at a trial would, and that is true regardless of any advice by your attorney or anyone else? Yes. Do you understand that neither the court, your attorney, nor the district attorney's office has anything to do with parole, the Department of Corrections, or Board of Pardons and Paroles, and no one can guarantee parole no matter what anyone has told you? Yes. Do you understand that there may be other adverse or unfavorable consequences as a result of this guilty plea conviction, just as there would be from a conviction following a trial? For yes. example, your guilty plea may affect your right to vote, your right to hold public office, your right to serve on a jury, your right to obtain a passport, your right to receive, possess, or transport a firearm, or the ability to obtain employment. Yes. Do you understand that by pleading guilty to a felony, if you use, receive, possess, or transport a firearm, or use a firearm in a crime, you will be guilty of a felony, which may carry a sentence of one to 15 years in prison. Yes. Do you understand that you waive any and all defenses, including any mental health defenses, by entering a plea of guilty? Yes. Do you understand that if you went to trial, you had the right to a trial by jury, the right to see, 
hear and confront witnesses called to testify against you, and the right to testify to remain silent and not incriminate yourself. Yes. Do you understand that by pleading guilty, you are giving up the following rights? After each right, I'll ask you to say yes or no if you understand. The right to a trial by jury. Yes. The right to remain silent and not incriminate yourself. Yes. The right to confront witnesses against you. Yes. The right to assist with counsel hired by you or to court appointed counsel if you cannot afford an attorney at the trial of your case. Yes. The right to the presumption of innocence. Yes. The right to testify on your own behalf and to present other evidence. Yes. The right to subpoena witnesses and compel the production of evidence. Yes. The right to have the charges against you proved beyond a reasonable doubt. Yes. The right to appeal if convicted of these charges after a trial. Yes. Has anyone forced, threatened, or promised you anything to get you to enter a guilty plea? No. Is it your decision to waive these rights and enter a guilty plea because you're in fact guilty? Yes. With respect to indictment 22 SC 183 572, how do you plead to count one, conspiracy to violate the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act? Guilty. Is this guilty plea freely and voluntarily given with a full knowledge of the charge against you? Yes. Do you understand that you have only a limited right to appeal this guilty plea conviction? Yes. Do you understand that you have four years from today's date to file a habeas corpus petition challenging the voluntariness of this plea? Yes. And that can challenge anything about the constitutionality of the plea. It's not limited to voluntariness. Understand? Yes. And Your Honor, if this case were to... Hang on just a second. Um, you also have... Um, so four years for that um, to file a direct appeal. You have 30 days from the date of sentencing, which is going to be today. And um, you have the until the end of this term of court to file a motion seeking to withdraw your guilty plea. That doesn't mean anything like that would be granted. You would have to establish facts that would warrant that. But that's the, just the time period is until the end of this term of court. Do you understand those as well? Yes. All right. Your Honor, if this case were to continue with trial, Your Honor, the state would expect... As to this defendant, the state would expect to show that what has already come into evidence that on July 3rd, 2017, as well as October 23rd, 2018, that this defendant is an associate of the enterprise of YSL, also known as Young Slime Life, and that he conspired to associate together with others for the common purpose of illegally obtaining money and property through a pattern of racketeering activity and conducting and participating in the enterprise through a pattern of racketeering activity and further to the conspiracy this defendant engaged in the activities below. He engaged in activities that assisted with preserving, protecting, and enhancing the reputation, power, and territory of the enterprise through acts of racketeering activity to include murder, assault, and threats of violence. That this defendant preserve, protect, and enhance the reputation, power, and territory of the enterprise by the posting of messages, images, appearance, and videos, and songs demonstrating allegiance to the enterprise and a willingness to engage in in violence on his behalf and to obtain money, weapons, and other property being they found <coughs> marijuana as well as sandwich baggies that would be used to package drugs and there are also guns found inside of that vehicle. Also in July of 2017, this defendant was stopped during a traffic stop in the Cascade area, Your Honor. Within, after being stopped, Your Honor, there was a consensual search of the vehicle that yielded powder and MDMA Xanax, as well as a loaded gun inside of that vehicle. Additionally, Your Honor, in July 2019, Mr. Nichols was featured in a video with another YSL member, Shannon Stilwell, and Woody Lee. In that video, it was entitled Slap Talk. And in that video, uh, co-conspirator Shannon Stilwell, while performing, makes such quotes as, me and my slimes are above the law. We know from the evidence that slimes is one of the terminology used by members of YSL to refer to themselves or other members of this enterprise, and then last but certainly not least, Your Honor, that in March of 2022, Your Honor, Mr. Nichols was found in surveillance video at a gas station at, at Windsor Street and in Fulton Street here in Atlanta, Georgia. This is on March 14, 2022, um, during what the state would believe to show an onset of a gang war that really started in 2015 with the death of Donovan Thomas that carried on into 2022. In February of 2022, a rival gang member by the name of Rayshawn Bennett, uh, also known as YFA Lucci, was stabbed at the Fulton County Jail in February of 2022. Information about that stabbing was made public in early part of March 2022, around March 3rd of 2022. Once that information was released to the public, there was an onset of retaliatory activity that occurred between March 3rd, 2022 and March 16th of 2022. 
That includes a March 11th homicide of Wyatt's associate, Christian McMiller and Darius Ford. It also did include a retaliatory um, shooting of a Wyatt Fenn associate, and then ultimately it led to a murder of Shamel Drinks, who we believe is a Wyatt Fenn associate. This murder occurred again on March 14, 2022. Mr. Nichols is seen on surveillance video at that BP gas station as I just referenced earlier. He was at the gas station with YFL co-conspirator uh, Shannon Stilwell. Mr. Stilwell was driving an Audi vehicle. Mr. Nichols came to that gas station in a Ford Fusion vehicle. You see both of them on camera together. Uh, while they are at that gas station, Shamel Drinks approaches that gas station as well. I think unbeknownst to Mr. Drinks, um, Mr. Stilwell was still in his vehicle, which is the Audi. At some point in time, Mr. Nichols got into his vehicle, the Ford Fusion. Um, once Mr. Drinks finished his business or finished handling business at that gas station, we know that there's a phone call between occupants of the car that Mr. Stilwell was in and occupants of the car that Mr. Nichols was in. That communication was to the effect that we need to get on FaceTime. As soon as that conversation ensues, we see Mr. Drinks leave the gas station in his vehicle and both the car that Mr. Stilwell is driving, as well as the car that Mr. Nichols is driving, both follow out of the gas station, following behind Mr. Drinks. Mr. Drinks proceeds down the street to the light at Windsor, which is right by I-20 in Windsor. Mr. Drinks is in the far left lane. The car involving with Mr. Stilwell pulls up to the middle lane, and Mr. Nichols' vehicle pulls up to the far right lane. Um, this is all captured on surveillance video and surveillance camera. Um, they are at the light for a moment. Then we see both the, the car with Mr. Stilwell as well as the car with Mr. Nichols drive through a red light, um, leaving the car with Mr. Drinks sitting at that light. About 30 minutes later, the Samaritan sees that car still sitting there, approaches the vehicle, and Mr. Drinks is now deceased um, inside of that vehicle. Um, we had known through LPR readers that both Mr. Stilwell's vehicle and Mr. and the car involved in Mr. Nichols drive in the direction of 20 westbound and followed in tandem. Two days later, when um, after the case is investigated and arrest warrants are taken out um, on March 17th, excuse me, three days later, Mr. Nichols is found with Mr. Stilwell um, at a Chick-fil-A gas station, excuse me, Chick-fil-A restaurant. There is a chase, I won't call it a high-speed chase, but there is a chase through the city of East Point, and eventually Mr. Nichols as well as Mr. Stilwell are both apprehended after, um, after arrest warrants were ultimately taken out for the murder of Mr. Drink Schreiner. Given where we are in the case, Your Honor, we know that Mr. Nichols, we do not believe Mr. Nichols was in the vehicle in which the shooting occurred, but he was in this other vehicle. Um, the state has made a decision to move forward with this recommendation um, for the RICO count, Your Honor, for count one. <clears throat> Mr. Harvey, are y'all acknowledging uh, a factual basis to the count one, the RICO count? Okay, we are acknowledging a factual basis. There has already been evidence with regard to the July 3rd, 2017 drug event the October 23rd, 2018 drug event. We categorically deny and contest any use of violence by Mr. Um, Nichols. We don't agree to the underlying factual basis. We believe those two predicate acts that were committed by <coughs> Mr. Nichols without any question are sufficient to meet the elements of the offense. We, the offense to which he's pleaded to, which is a RICO conspiracy, a RICO conspiracy requires proof that the defendant either conspire with another person to violate one of the substantive provisions of RICO, and that would be drug offenses, or personally endeavor, I believe that's what the language of the statute says, to violate one of the substantive provisions. Well, that's what the language of the statute says, but yes. he is indicted in this indictment with conspiring, not with endeavoring. That's, that's correct. So we're talking about a conspiracy. We acknowledge the two events that he participated in. We categorically deny, categorically deny any other allegations um, other than those two events that are sufficient for a factual basis. We categorically deny that we participated in, <clears throat> in any way, in the unfortunate death of Mr. Drinks. We categorically deny any other charges to which we are, substantive charges to which we are not entering a plea, and that includes gang charges. This is a plea 
solely to a conspiracy. Imagine surviving a tour in Afghanistan only to be murdered in front of your own family in New York City. Sadly, we acknowledge a fast factual basis to that extent, Your Honor. Understood. All right, thank you. Your Honor, I think I have one, one additional thing to say. Go ahead. Um, the factual basis regarding the nationwide setup is that the evidence has shown and will continue to show that Mr. Nichols conspired with others to participate in Young Slime Life through a pattern of racketeering activity, and multiple defendants and unindicted co-conspirators have committed over acts to further this conspiracy, including drug sales, aggravated assault, and murder. Also including social media posts, asserting the violent nature of and asserted dominance of Young Slime Life, also known as YSL. And that concludes our factual and, and again, once again, we again categorically deny those representations. And again, the only thing that is necessary to meet the factual evidence of a 1614-4C is proof that the defendant conspire with another person to violate one, one of the substantive provisions of RICO, and that is subsumed by the drug offenses that have already been proven in this case and to which Mr. Nichols has previously pled. All right, thank you. Understood. And you're right, post with the waiver of rights form. Yes. All right, um, Mr. Harvey, have you uh, reviewed with Mr. Nichols this uh, plea of guilty and waiver of rights form, which the two of you have uh, both signed? I, I have, Judge, in each right. individual provision in that um, plea colloquy um, has been acknowledged and gone over personally with Mr. Nichols. All right. And um, Mr. Nichols, uh, have you had sufficient time to consider this um, guilty plea that has been negotiated between the state and your attorneys and to discuss anything you wanted to about that with your attorneys? Yes. All right. And um, you understand I hope, I'm going to ask you, that it is your decision ultimately, obviously with the advice of your attorneys, but it's ultimately up to you individually um, to decide whether you want to enter this guilty plea or not. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. And you do want to enter this guilty plea? Yes. All right. And uh, Mr. Harvey, have you advised Mr. Nichols of the alternatives if he does not um, ultimately go through with this guilty plea and the potential benefits and drawbacks of all of the other options? Yes, th right. very thoroughly, Judge. All right. All right, Mr. Harvey, is there anything that the defense wants to add to the record? Um, Judge, other than the statement with regard to the underlying factual basis, I would point out for the court that when Mr. Nichols filled out his form, it says 29 plus. He is a birthday boy in a couple of days, and he will be 30. And at 30 years of age, he has a wife, he has got a 13-year-old daughter, <clears throat> he's got a 10-year-old daughter, and an 8-year-old son. His wife and sister, I believe, are here in the courtroom um, to support him. He, Mr. Nichols, was born and raised in Atlanta, and you know, I, we are at this point before I have even given my opening statement in this case. Yes, sir. I, I do want the court to know that Mr. Nichols mother died in prison his father was shot by the atlanta police when he was four years old and he was raised by friends and family in the atlanta area so he has come to this point in his life from a very humble beginning and um he has sought the support of friends in this courtroom and others in this courtroom He is an intelligent young man who I believe has a future. Every day we do a word of the day. We put a new word into a sentence. And I think this is in his best interest. I know that there is, and I know this plea is negotiated, but it's a long downside from 7 to 20. Um, so... The courts will have jurisdiction over him for a, a period of time. So I ask the court, given who this young man is and given our categorical denial of some of the factual basis, to accept the plea and sentence Mr. Nichols accordingly. 
Miss Nichols, is there anything that you want to say? No, no. All right. All right, I find there to be a factual basis for the uh, guilty plea to the RICO count, count one of the indictment, um, that being a conspiracy to uh, acquire control or interest in money and personal property through a pattern of racketeering activity. And that is the only count that uh, guilty plea is being entered for. The remaining counts of this indictment as against Mr. Nichols are being null crossed by the state as a part of this indictment. I find having heard the evidence um, up to the point of trial right now that there um, is evidence of at least one overt act um, in furtherance of the conspiracy. And that uh, there is evidence that would fall within the required statute of limitations uh, to establish this RICO conspiracy count. One of the things that uh, we as judges are instructed by our Uniform Superior Court rules to do when we are considering whether to accept a guilty plea and whether to accept a negotiated uh, sentence, and this is a negotiated sentence in this case, um, is to take into account whether giving leniency uh, in sentencing is uh, going to aid in ensuring promptness and certainty, or at least more promptness and more certainty with regard to corrective measures, whether the defendant and in this case, the defendant has acknowledged guilt and is accepting uh, responsibility for his guilt of the RICO count. And whether accepting the plea will aid in avoiding further delays, not just um, with regard to this case, but with regard to the entirety of our system here in Fulton County. And this plea does go towards doing all of those things. Um, I am going to accept the plea as negotiated and sentence in accord with the negotiated recommendation. I, as I said before, find there to be a factual basis for count one of the plea. I find the plea to have been freely, knowingly, intelligently, and voluntarily entered into by Mr. Nichols um, with an understanding of the consequences of doing that. And the sentence on Count one is the sentence that has been negotiated of 20 years to serve seven with the balance of uh, those years to be served on probation. And that I don't know if there are any special conditions attached to this that y'all have talked about at all. There, there are no negotiated special okay. conditions in those, but there, so there are none as far as I'm concerned. All right. Okay. So with regard to uh, the time that you were on probation, um, you need to stay out of all kinds of criminal trouble. Um, make this a birthday present to yourself and to your children and to your wife and family um, that you will leave from here today and leave whatever you used to do behind you and um, take the next few years. You know, you're going to have some um, years that are still to be served on this. You'll have credit for the time you've already served. But you're still going to be facing some incarceration time. But after that, you are going to be out. And you, I believe, um, Mr. Harvey is correct, um, can be a productive member of society. And this is a, an opportunity for you to do that and for you to put your past behind you, the bad parts of it, um, and continue and make your children proud of you and set a good example for them, an example that um, I guess, unfortunately, you were not lucky enough to have throughout the entirety of your childhood with your parents. I'm sorry about that. But you can be the kind of parent that you ought to be to your children. Uh, so I am going to impose that sentence, and I am going to uh, wish you luck and good fortune as you go forth from here. So um, I think that unless there's anything else from either party, that will conclude these proceedings, and y'all can go ahead and take him into custody. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. And Ms. Taylor will make this an exhibit to the plea. Thank you. All right, we are adjourned for the day.